Hello everybody, welcome to the Southwest Florida Tech Net. My name is Joseph Gam4 O V Z. And I have here on the bench today a really, really nice find that I got off eBay from a friend of mine. And what it is is it is a ICOM IC03AT 220 band VHF transceiver. This is a vintage radio. It's definitely been used. It's got a lot of like cosmetic damage on it. Um well, not damage, but just like kind of wear and tear. The, the screen's kind of scratched up and whatnot. These radios were made in the 80s. I don't know the exact year off the top of my head. Um, but what I made me want to make this video today was that I was actually able to locate the original antenna on eBay as well. I went on eBay and I searched for a 220 band uh, BNC antenna, and I found almost nothing. I found, I think I found like a diamond antenna. And then everything else was just uh, two meter, 440 dual band stuff. But the one listing that was that matched my search criteria was this here antenna. It says 220 megahertz on it, and it is the original stock ICOM antenna that came with this radio. So that was kind of an amazing find because not only was it the only thing available, but it was actually correct. So I picked that up. It cost me about. I want to say it was about $28, and then I paid like 7 bucks for shipping. So it was kind of pricey for an antenna. It was like 30 bucks, But to get the original and put it on here, that was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. So uh, in order to make this radio work, when I got it, it didn't have a battery. These batteries don't last very long anyway. Uh, they're definitely not. The original battery definitely would not have lasted. So what I went and did was uh, because this radio, like the battery mechanism on here, is the same across many different versions of ICOM radios. They have um, the IC028T. Um, they have the, the Radio Shack HTX202, I believe, was another radio. Very popular radios that are still in use by a lot of people today, so they actually still make batteries that fit the radio. Uh, it doesn't have the little prongs for the base charger, so the way you charge it is by using a, a wall plug that plugs into the side here, and then a little light comes on and it charges. But this I think is an 1800 milliamp battery. For its size it should be a lot more, but what do you, you know, it's Chinese Chinese manufacturing, so it's kind of what you get. Um, the little mechanism here as you can see it also looks like that. And you take the radio and you just slide it on sideways. And it latches into place. It's powered on. I have it tuned to the local 220 repeater, which does not have a, the best signal here. We have uh, stuff on top. We have high power and low power. We have the display light, which still works. Looks nice. Um, we have DC input. The one cool thing about these older radios was that a lot of them had DC input so that you could bypass the battery. So this right here, you can plug in a cigarette lighter adapter into it and use it separate from the battery in a car or off a power supply. Um, it also has a microphone and speaker port on it so you can connect up a like a handset. The other thing I like a lot about these radios is the absolute monsters of belt clips they had. This thing is huge. That isn't going to break. That hasn't broken in all 40 years that this has been around. So that's pretty neat. Um, the information for the radio is hidden under there. I don't think most of that really matters, but there it is. And this thing is really cool. I quite like it. The audio quality is great. The only functional problem I found with it is that the push to talk button is a little intermittent. Like if I click it, you can see that time it worked, but there, I'm pushing it right now, but it's not keying up. So if I push a little bit harder, now it's in half power for some reason. I don't know why it would, oh, I, I put it in half power. Hmm. That's what happened. But so you kind of have that. Um, the speaker is nice and loud. Not quite as loud as some of the more modern handhelds. And definitely, you can tell whenever you're in a loud environment that the speaker doesn't, even at max volume, does not quite perform as well. So I'm not exactly sure what the output specs are, but there you go. Let's go try it on the local repeater. Why don't we? Got to get in a spot where I can get a signal. Oh, there we go. I get just right. There we go. Is 
there's the audio quality is pretty good too one thing that is amazing about this handheld that you don't find with handhelds made in this era is that it actually has a built-in tone function so you can see the little and we can't really see it on camera very well but there's a little music note icon right there and you can actually program in a tone from the screen in the radio even you, you could get tone boards for radios like these but it was always dip switch programmable from the back of the radio or the inside of the radio this has it built in which is really quite amazing so this must have been a, a high-end radio back when it was when it was new um, the body is all made out of metal like like you could drive you could drive over it and it would probably survive um, everything is just really heavy duty the battery of course is not the same color because it's I couldn't find one that matched perfectly online but yeah this is just a really neat find I really like old vintage radios so I thought I would share this one because it's one of my favorites um, finding 220 rigs these days is very difficult you can buy the Baofeng and then you just have a Baofeng that does 220 but this is a mono band so I like taking this to events and stuff and I actually use it at field day for our power communications and it worked very well so I just thought this was cool just kind of wanted to show this um, ICOM IC 03AT here on the Southwest Water Technet YouTube channel